Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my favorite video to film each month, and that is the new Cozy Mystery releases for the following month. That will be August 2023 for this one, and I've done some animations for different books throughout this to make it kind of fun. Let's hop into our first pick. First we have a brand new Cozy Mystery series, and this is Tracy Wilton's Miss Morris and the Wolfman, a Salem B&B mystery. It is book one in the series. It will be coming out on August 22nd, 2023. And Tracy Wilton is actually a pseudonym or like a, her one of her other pen names I should say is Tracy Hall and she writes the Scottish Shire mystery series which I really love so I'm excited to see this one it sounds really fun here's the basic summary for the story our main character is Charlene Morris she's taking a night away from her Salem Massachusetts B&B &B and its resident ghost to enjoy a spooky double bill until murder upstages the evening so it's Saturday night at the movies and she is really excited because Darren and Elise Schultz are reopening one of Salem's classic theaters. She's really excited to help this couple with their new venture and Darren has picked up some cult classic double headers featuring Lona Cheney in The Wolfman. But things get crazier than expected when Elise starts to choke on her popcorn mid-movie. Once the lights go up, she is found to be dead. Once the police arrive, they discover that the popcorn was poisoned, and Detective Sam Holden has her, his eyes on her husband as the guilty party. But Charlene absolutely does not believe that Darren would hurt his wife, even if his company's specially seasoned salts were sprinkled on the popcorn. So Charlene is now trying to figure out who had a motive to do something to Elise. With a little bit of help from Jack, the handsome ghost who haunts her bed and breakfast, Charlene delves into the ill-fated couple's past. The more she learns, the more Charlene wonders if this time she's bitten off more than she can chew. I'm really excited for this. It looks like it's a brand new series and the premise is really fun, a great supernatural one as we are getting closer to fall and the cover is darling. Our next one is a very popular series by Donna Andrews. It's called Birder She Wrote, a Meg Langslow mystery. It is book 33 in the series and it will be launching on August 1st. So in this one Meg has a lot going on and all she wants to do is enjoy an early summer morning. You know, like most of us, she just wants to enjoy her morning, but she just keeps getting slammed with projects. And this starts off with her dad asking her to set up some bees in his backyard, which probably not her idea of a good time and then her grandmother shows up with a reporter and tail and then the mayor of the town actually tasks her with this project which she's not looking forward to and that is talking to and like handling this problem where a lot of people are moving into the town and they're building these big like McMansions next to these farms and the it's just disrupting the town's like beauty and it's noisy it's just people are clashing over it so Meg has been tasked at solving this or trying to neutralize some tension there. On top of this Meg has been given a task by a deacon from a Baptist church in the area. They are trying to find an African-American center cemetery in the area. I guess maybe it, I don't know if it wasn't like properly marked or something or if it's just been lost to time. I'm not entirely sure what the surrounding details for that is but they are looking for the cemetery and when they actually stumble upon the cemetery with this nosy reporter in tail of course they find a fresh corpse which of course is terrible and this starts the mystery series. I think the covers for the series are so fun and this is definitely a very long-lasting cozy mystery series. If you're a fan you'll have plenty of reading material with it. Coming out on August 22nd, 2023, we have a historical fiction cozy mystery called Miss Morton and the Spirits of the Underworld, a Miss Morton mystery. This is by Catherine Lloyd. This one sounds like a lot of fun. Our main character is Lady Caroline and she's basically the daughter of a disgraced earl so she's excited to be hired as a lady companion because she's now back in high society London where she grew up and everything and the person she's a companion to her name is Dorothy and she is helping her with like the coming out season and Dorothy is described as a hit a very unique hit but a hit nonetheless which is great and she kind of finds herself in some trouble when Dorothy gets into the spiritualist like practices and Dorothy decides to go to the spiritualist meeting at this woman named Madame Lavinia's home and she begs Caroline to come with her. So Caroline obliges and while she's there Madame Lavinia hands her Caroline a note with very detailed information about her family that nobody else should know. So Caroline's a skeptic but now she's kind of like is there something to this? Before she can figure that out Madame Lavinia is found dead and it's found out that 
this woman had been blackmailing a lot of her clients. So there's lots of suspects and Caroline is now on the case with the help of the woman she's a companion to, Dorothy. So this one sounded really fun. I think the cover's fun. I love a good historical cozy mystery and wanted to include this one. Our next release has the most interesting cover. I really love it. It's called Mugshots of Manhattan, a snapshot of New York City mystery. It is by Kristen Brecher and it is book two within the series. It will be coming out on August 22nd as well. This one has a really unique premise and it does take place in New York City so it's not traditional cozy mystery in the small town but it is still supposed to be like a clean mystery and rather cozy. I love the cover. Our main character in this is Liv and she's recently been hired as a photography assistant to this big celebrity named Bisa and she's very excited for this. She's thinking this could be her big break. She's excited for the gig but this big party's coming up and she's worried because Bisa's sister Anna is threatening to come up and just ruin the PR moment. They have like a lot of tension between them. She's ruining, she's like threatening to ruin the event. Liv is really concerned and her her new boyfriend Harry is tagging along as well. Well, things turn for the worse when Anna is actually found dead and Bisa is a suspect, a bunch of other people are suspects, and Liv starts to poke around and figure out who would have wanted Anna dead. On top of this, Harry, her, her new boyfriend, seems to also have some kind of case that he's working on or he's involved in some other type of mystery. So there's really two cases that they're trying to tackle together and some images they wish they could forget about. So I thought this one looked really fun. Let me know if you've heard of this series. I haven't, but it sounded really fun. Coming out on August 29th, we have Miss Jeffries Aims to Win a Victorian Mystery. This is book 41 within the Miss Jeffries Mystery series written by Emily Brightwell. So in this one, when Miss Jeffries needs to help the detective inspector in town. Basically there is this archery competition and this archery competition is taking place with the West London Archery Club and our main kind of person we're following besides Miss Jeffries is Jeremy. He is kind of a buffoon is what people describe him as. He's a jokester. People don't all love him but unfortunately during the competition and like club meetings he's actually found dead struck by uh, an arrow is actually what kills him. And as Miss Jeffrey looks into his past, she discovers that the whole like jokester pers persona he put on really hid the list of enemies that he actually had, like the serious enemies. He's made enemies with other businessmen, other archery members, he's, uh, he hasn't paid bills, he's cheated people, he's not exactly the nicest person is what we're getting from this. And so Miss Jeffries and the inspector are looking into this case together. It is a Victorian mystery. I, like I said, historical fiction mysteries are always so much fun. I think the cover for this is really cute. Let me know if you've read the series, because it seems like a commitment to catch up with this since this is book 41. But if it's really good, I might need to get into it. For those of you that love a bookish cozy mystery, this next one is for you. It is called A Deadly Dedication, The Open Book Mysteries. It is book four in the series, written by Margaret Ledone, and it will be coming out on the first. So this has a really charming uh, synopsis. I really like the idea. Basically, our main character is Penelope, and she is both an American writer, and she also runs the open book bookshop. And she is really excited because there's actually going to be this high-end gourmet shop that's going to be opening in their small town soon. But it turns out not everybody is actually thrilled about that. There's a lot of competition in town for this kind of food already or like other types of vendors and they're afraid that this new shop will bring their own business down. And unfortunately, Simeon, the owner of the new gourmet shop, is actually poisoned. So now Penelope is looking into the case trying to figure out was it one of his competitors who poisoned him? Fortunately, Penelope can lean on her friends at the open book bookshop that she runs and I'm really excited for this. It has a gorgeous cover. Look at the adorable cat. How beautiful. Cannot wait for this one. This next one I've had some hit or misses with in the series. I've I, I need to try another book in it. I'm kind of like, I've loved some, didn't like some others. Let me know if you've read this. Do you think it gets better with time? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But this is part of the Key West Food Critic Mystery Series. This is book 13 in that series. It's called A Clue in the Crumbs, written by Lucy Burdett and it will be coming out on the 8th. Our main character in this is food critic Haley Snow, and she also has her pal Miss Gloria, who she lives with, and they're overjoyed to welcome Violet and Bettina Booth, aka the Scottish Scone Sisters, to Key West. The sisters are going to be hosting the UK Bakes Key West edition. However, the same day they arrive, the bed and breakfast that the sisters are staying in actually gets torched. The contest begins the next morning featuring three local bakers. One is the inn owner's wife, Reina, who is not only the most talented chef of the group, but also a person of interest in the fire. The next night, a dog walker discovers a body near that same bed and breakfast, and it appears to be Reina's husband, with the murder weapon pointing directly to the two Scottish Scone sisters. 
What a mess. The show has to go on though, and in between filming sessions, the three elderly ladies and Haley must search for clues to the brutal murder in order to find out who wants to force them out of the kitchen. But as they draw closer to the answer, the threats from a murderer grow closer too. Are they in danger of getting baked off? I love this. I really liked Haley as a character. I need to try another one from the series. Let me know if you've read more than like four books in the series. What were your thoughts on books going forward? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But I do re remember really loving book one especially and I just love the cover and concept. And Key West is such a great location for like a summery cozy mystery. Next we have a Halloween cozy mystery because it is getting that time of year. This one is called Catch Me If You Candy. It is a bake shop mystery series book 18 in the series written by Ellie Alexander and it will be coming out on August 22nd, 2023. So I personally love the Bake Shop Mystery series. Our main character in it is Jules. It takes place in Ashland, Oregon. It's one of the most like seasonal holiday based cozy mystery series I've read. It just every single time it's taking place during a specific season. It's just very location focused I would say like you really get that seasonal or holiday vibe so I'm excited for this Halloween one. Basically in this one Jules is excited with her bake shop and tort. They are building a bunch of different autumn and Halloween treats and things for an upcoming festival. It is the end of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and the town is transitioning into like Halloween costumes and even this is extending even to the pets. In fact the parade for this event is actually going to be run by the Grand Marshal who's a pug. I love pugs. I love pugs so much and the pug's name is King George. Can it get better than that? I don't know. But during the events, someone actually finds that the dragon is slumped over and the person in the dragon costume is dead. And Jules is especially alarmed by this because somebody has of course lost their life, but because her mother's Mahjong partner had gotten like a note saying something about a dragon dying, and at first they thought it was like a prank or just some weird thing, but Jules is starting to wonder, was this a coincidence? And she starts to dig into the case. Highly recommend the series. It's really fun. It's super popular for a reason. The d desserts are delicious. Can't go wrong with this one. Next we have Honey Drop Dead, a tea shop mystery. It is book 26 in the series written by Laura Childs and it will be coming out on August 8th. This mystery is hopping. We have our main character Theodosa and she runs a tea shop and does like tea parties and events and she's asked by her friend Holly to do this uh, big event in like a park and everything is going well until an alleged beekeeper, who, who's probably not actually a beekeeper, shoots toxic smoke into the crowd of guests. And during the smoke, this man named Osgood, who is a political candidate, is actually shot dead. So, of course, this is devastating. People have lost their lives. Holly's guests are furious and scared and freaked out. And the police and the community are trying to keep things hush-hush because of the political nature, possibly, of the murder. So Holly takes her friend Theodosa aside and asks her to do a shadow investigation anyways to solve it, and she starts to look into Osgood's possible suspect pool, and there is a ex- there was a soon-to-be ex-wife, there's political competition, there's some bad business, there's everything you could think of. On top of this, she's trying to run multiple tea parties, there's a chase through the swamp, there's a second murder, there's a ton going on. This one sounds jam-packed with action and fun tea events, so it sounds like a delight if you like tea this one's probably for you. Next we have another new cozy mystery. It's called The Accidental Medium. It's book one in the series and this one is going to be by Tracy Whitwell and it will be released on August 1st. Our main character in this is kind of an interesting sleuth. Her name is Tans, and she's an accidental medium. She is a wine-loving, straight-talking kind of gal, and she's also in the process of grieving because three years ago she lost her friend Frank to a tragic car accident, so she's got a lot going on, but she decides to start working in this new age shop. And while she's there, she discovers that these voices in her head are not her going crazy, as she puts it, but are actually, she can hear voices from the dead. She starts to realize that she can tell people, like communicate from the dead and like tell people messages from like loved ones and things. And the more she gets into it, the more she realizes that her family actually has a long like held line of psychics. So very interesting premise. There isn't much detail about the actual like murder mystery, but that's kind of the premise for it. So if you like a supernatural cozy mystery, Sounds like we have a medium and she's kind of a cocktail loving, wine loving gal and she's just trying to move on with her life and she discovers she has this ability 
lots of craziness ensues. A very fun, maybe kind of spooky season cozy mystery to get into. For the cat lovers out here, we have a bookmobile cat mystery. This is book 11 in the series. This one is called A Troubling Tale, written by Lori Cass, and it will be coming out on August 1st. Our main character in this is a librarian, and her name is Minnie, and she has her adorable cat, Eddie, who's a rescue cat, and they are in the charming town of Chilson, Michigan, which is really beautiful in the spring. The bookmobile is delivering all these reads to the patrons throughout the town. It's exciting. The warm days are coming, but then a chill sweeps through when they discover that one of their favorite patrons, the owner of Henneka's Candy Emporium, has been found murdered. Minnie just cannot understand who would have murdered this kind man, and she decides that this sticky problem is hers to solve. She's going to figure it out because she really cared about this person. Unfortunately, rumors start flying around town, and the police have no leads. Minnie is almost ready to throw her investigative hat into the ring, but the more she looks into it, the less certain she is that the victim's past is as wholesome as his reputation. She starts to unearth some truths, and she discovers that there might have been several people from his past who wanted him dead. So Minnie and her rescue cat Eddie will not rest until they determine how their friend met his bitter end. So very sweet one. I'm really excited for this. I love a good cat cozy mystery series. I really want to start this one soon. I think the cover is just so cute for this. Next we have a new to me cozy mystery series and this one is called A Sense for Murder, A Sally Solari Mystery, book six in the series written by Leslie Kars. And this will be coming out on the first. Okay, I love this one because it's not only a murder mystery, but there's a heist involved, and I just love heists. I think they're so fascinating in books and fiction and stuff. So our main character in this is Sally, and she is a really great chef. She lives in Santa Cruz, and she really has her hands full because she's running both a French Polynesian restaurant and then like her family's Italian seafood restaurant. And the town is kind of struggling because it sounds like there's a lot of people who are homeless, who are kind of camping around, they don't have anywhere to go. There's a lot going on there. And she, Sally, jumps on this idea to help at this auction where she'll be cooking in this culinary bookshop, which does that just mean like a cafe in a bookshop or like a full-on restaurant? Because either way, that sounds great. But she's going to be cooking and there will be an auction with this really great book, like a book from Julia Childs, like a rare edition. And everything is going well. Unfortunately, the Pages and Plum dining manager is found dead and the book that they were going to auction off from Julia Childs is gone. So Sally is now up to her neck trying to solve this mystery. She's trying to use all of her skill sets, all of her contacts. She's trying to keep her neck intact from this killer who seems to also have a love for French cooking. This one just sounded really fun. I love the idea of a culinary bookshop. That sounds like a blast. We have another bookish cozy mystery up next and this is called Murder at a Cape Bookstore, a cozy capers book group mystery, book five in the series. It's written by Maddie Day and it will be coming out on August 22nd. This one takes place with our main character Mac and she's a bike bicycle shop owner in Cape Cod and it is nearing the spring equinox and the Chamber of Commerce director Wagner is kind of getting some events together, butting heads with some locals. Things are going on but you know it's March. They're gonna get through. And there's plenty of delicious treats and things to enjoy throughout the town so everything seems okay until Wagner is actually found dead. Not great and he's found pinned under a bookshelf. Horrific way to go. Not great and Mac and her cozy caper book group are going to kind of sleuth in this. They just can't resist solving a mystery so close to home and one where the bookshelf kind of ended ended it all. You know, it seems a little poetic. So they're going to go ahead and solve this. It is a spring cozy mystery taking place in Cape Cod. Sounds really fun and delicious, but still very bookish. So really fun one to check out. For historical fiction fans, we have Murder at the Elms, a gilded Newport mystery. It is book 11 within the series, written by Alyssa Maxwell. This takes place in 1901. And it will be coming out on August 22nd, 2023. And this is book 11 within the Gilded Newport Mystery series. So this one sounds very fun. We also have another heist trope one in here. So I'm excited. It takes place in 1901. Our main characters are Emma and Derek. They have just returned from their honeymoon. They're settling back in. Things are going okay. Until this man named Edward, who is a coal baron in the area, decides to show off a little bit. He's got a big mansion and it's the first one in the area to get electricity. He's very proud of this. It's powered by coal. And and he actually has all of his servants except for one go on strike. Like they're not happy with him. He sounds like a pretty cruel employer. And he decides to anyways throw a big party, have everyone over including Emma and Derek. They arrive and there's a lot of music. It's a beautiful party. 
but tragedy strikes when a chambermaid is actually found dead in like the coal I guess it's like a coal maybe not a coal mine like on the premise but like some kind of coal chute or something and the chambermaid is found in there and a guest diamond necklace is also missing. On top of that, a laborer is also disappeared, and the detective on the case enlists Emma and Derek to help him solve the case. Sounds really fun. I think the cover is gorgeous for this. We have another cat mystery. This one is called Nine Lives and Alibis, a cat cafe mystery. It is book seven in the series written by Kat Conte, and it will be coming out on August 22nd. This one is a messy one. So we have our main character, Maddie, and she is really excited because her town is getting ready for Halloween. It's that time of year, so another Halloween cozy mystery. Everything is going okay until her younger sister books a famous medium, like psychic, and has them come to town. The psychic comes to town, but there's a lot going on. There's some, you know, people who aren't very happy about this. There's the town busybody who has booked exclusive private meetings with them. And then Maddie's own best friend is actually asking the psychic for advice on two different 40 year old cold cases that she wants to get solved. A lot going on right there. And unfortunately the psychic is found pushed off a cliff and now it's left to wonder who was mad at this person. It's also discovered that the psychic had a stalker who was demanding that they connect them to their dead hus husband, like maybe communicate through the dead or something like that. So there's a lot of people who maybe would have been mad at either messages the psychic said, there's the stalker, there's a lot of things being riled up, the town is thrown into a frenzy, they're trying to prepare for Halloween, and this is obviously not what anyone wanted to happen except for the murderer. So this is kind of the general synopsis for this one. It sounds really fun. I've been meaning to get to this cozy mystery series. It sounds like a blast. Our next one is one I mentioned in my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I'll link that above if you want to check out my cozy mystery release video. This one is called Red to Dead at the Lakeside Library, a Lakeside Library mystery. It is book three in the series written by Holly Danvers and it's recommended for fans of Jen McKinley and Ellery Adams. Our main character in this is Rain Wilmot and she's the owner of the Lakeside Library. She thinks this is the best opportunity to bring back her mother's summer book club. Unfortunately, the summer sun starts to really heat up when one of the club members, Lily, is found dead in her home not long after the first meeting. Alongside her sidekick and neighbor, Julia Reynolds, and the charming Jace Lowe, Rain discovers that the murder is seemingly inspired by the book the club recently discussed, which was Agatha Christie's classic mystery novel, Sparkling Cyanide. But who would want to kill Lily, and more importantly, why? The deeper Rain dives into the story, the more confusing everything becomes. Was it possible that Lily was murdered to cover up a tragic accident years ago? involving an old classmate, or were the rumors true? Did Lily have a priceless original Laura Ingalls Wilder manuscript and someone killed her for that? Or was this having to do with Lily receiving a mysterious letter before her death from a supposed long-lost relative? Was this a hoax? With all of this going on, Rain realizes that all the leads come back to people involved in the book club. So Rain and her friends take a page from Agatha Christie and they have a reenactment of the book to try to come to the conclusion of what happened to their friend. This one just sounds really fun. I haven't personally read the series, but after looking at this new release, I was like, I need to get into the series. It sounds just super fun, super interesting. Rain sounds like a cool character. Next, we have a very summery, cozy mystery series, and this one is called The Bistro at Holiday Bay, Sunshine and Sweet Wine. It's written by Kathy Daly. It will be coming out on August 8th, and it is book four within the Bistro at Holiday Bay series. So this one sounds really unique because it looks like there's not a central character. It sounds like it's a central group that this cozy mystery takes place with. So that's kind of unique to me, at least. I haven't seen too many like that. Let me know if you have. But they've recently expanded the Holiday Bistro. They've opened like an outdoor eatery. It's very popular because it's summer and everyone wants to watch the summer concerts and enjoy the beautiful outdoor weather. And there's a lot of going, a lot of different things going on with the members. We have Beck, who is found this interesting case about a woman who when her when she was a child her mother disappeared then you have Amy who has entered herself into a clam chowder competition then you have Dawson who has an important life decision to make Nick Nikki has a new guy in her life and Kennedy is really struggling with empty nest syndrome while Dawson is completely out of town while Addie is visiting her brother in Boston the gang has a lot going on and then of course something goes amiss there's not too much detail in the synopsis but this does sound like kind of an interesting group cozy mystery like premise so I'm intrigued by it it looks like a really cute series last but not least we have one that is another most anticipated release for me this is written by GM Malliot it is the Saint Just Mystery series book five in the series called Death in Print 
and this will be coming out on August 1st. So our victim in this is a man named Jason. He is an Oxford tutor and a best-selling author, and during the celebratory event at Oxford, he's actually found at the bottom of the stairs likely pushed. So our main character uh, for this cozy mystery series is Detective St. Just. So he's like a small town inspector. I know some people like amateur sleuths, so keep that in mind. But alongside his fiance Portia, who is a crime writer, the two of them start to pair their resources together to solve this mystery and find out what happened to Jason. And he has no shortage of enemies. There are a lot of people who would have wanted this man dead. It's said that maybe he wrote a little bit too close to home with his best-selling novels, there's a lot of jealous rivals, and he was also talking about a new release that he was coming out with, a new book that might have revealed some secrets people would rather not have released. So lots of suspects. I really love this series. It has a very golden age mystery style, which I like even though it takes place in contemporary times. So definitely recommend it as long as you're okay with someone who's not technically an amateur sleuth, but it still has those like small town cozy vibes, which I love. That is the end of this giant list, guys. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching, and let me know your top three new releases for August. Which ones are you most excited for? I will leave my top three as well in the comments, and I'd love to hear what yours are. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. I do post new book content, especially in the cozy mystery, mystery and thriller genres, and some historical fiction. I would love it if you'd stick around, and thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. That was such a lovely surprise this month, and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.